Welcome to Command Control Power, a weekly podcast hosted by three certified members of the Apple Consultants Network, drawing from over half a century of combined experience. We talk shop, interview vendors and colleagues, and share what we've learned while operating our technology consulting practices. This is Joe Sapinari of Cymac, and my two co-hosts are Jerry Zygmunt of MacWorks and Sam Valencia of the HCS Technology Group. Command Control Power is brought to you commercial-free thanks to the support of our community. Our VIP supporters include Jason Detbarn of Adigy.com, Watchman Monitoring, and Adam Angst of Tidbits Content Network. We are very pleased once again to be joined by Jason Detbarn, founder and CEO of Adigy. Jason, thanks for joining us on Command Control Power once more. Hey guys, great to catch up again. Yeah, it's been a little while. We've had you on a few times and things are always changing. We were just reflecting on how we're celebrating our 10-year anniversary of doing the show. And 10 years ago, when we first started the show, we were talking about the 2013 Mac Pro. So if you can think about how just how different the times are now, especially in the realm of management, MDM in general, a lot has changed. So I wanted to focus on some of those recent developments in the MDM space. And I guess a good place to start is probably the most timely thing, which is the article that Adigy posted where you found that there's this issue with rapid security response updates not being applied in 25% of managed macOS devices. That's a pretty significant number for something that Apple wants to be pretty much automatic across the board. And the issue you guys found was part of a broader MDM issue that you've been tracking. So I thought we could talk about the specific issue with the delay in, in these RSR updates and the kind of root cause of this, which you've also identified and built some tools around. It's culmination that's taken a while, o- over a year ago now, as Apple shifted our OS update utility from a command line utility to MDM, there was challenges for the whole industry. And every vendor that you might work with on an MDM level has struggled with the reliability of that command. Because all we do, you know, when we're building our own agent technology is the early days of it, you had to reverse engineer things. You had to make sure everything worked very directly. When you have MDM, you're throwing it over the wall. You're hoping the infrastructure does the job that you asked it to do. And that's where you, you lose that perspective. MDM says, okay, I've got it. I'm doing the job right now. And what we found, we deployed a fact across all of our infrastructure. It was actually a higher number, close to 40% of infrastructure out there was in some periodic lock state. So the MDM client, which is what you know Apple writes and phones home to their infrastructure, that was either locked up or the OS update utility was locked up. And so we're seeing devices that haven't checked in over MDM for months. And that's obviously a big problem. Originally, it was, we have to wait for Apple to fix this, but it, 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 we really decided, look, we can't do that. Like this is too important, too critical of an ask for our customers. And so we started digging in and understanding, okay, now what can we do to slowly start to restart these utilities silently without any effect to the end users, and then go through different patterns where we're able to get to 94, 95% total compliance utilization across patching, which is, it could be a hundred percent, but that's pretty solid. Big step from where we're at. And we were doing that before the RSR rolled out. We rolled it out in private beta, then public beta with our customers and saw it was working very effectively. So when Apple issued their first ever rapid security response, they put it out there first saying, we we have this new feature in WWC last year, but they never used it. They never deployed it. It was dormant and ready to go. And what was different this time, why some of it was a little bit disruptive in and of itself was Apple issued the RSR. That went out not through their system updates team that normally does their typical communication paths, but it was done through their configuration management team, which made had just a different utility for doing that. And we never got any disclosures. So usually, and a lot of companies have their own policies, hey, we're only going to patch things if we see that there's a disclosure, public disclosure, we review that, <clears throat> and only then will we then roll out an update? So this sort of highest level security patch that Apple issues was saying, hey, we've got something that needs to be done right now, rapid security response, but we're not publicly disclosing why we're doing it. And that has also security teams in a bit of a fret over what to do here and how to start 
managing that. But we can only assume that at that highest level and even without the disclosure, this is something that really needs to be deployed immediately, likely, likely, in my opinion, an active threat. And we need to patch this faster than usual. And hence the other problem now is patching has been fundamentally broken for a while. And luckily our watchdog had been thoroughly in in a good place. And so we were able to roll out with all of our customers and we decided to listen, we can hoard this scenario for ourselves, this sort of last step of this process. But let's make this a standalone utility and make it publicly available for everyone. So they can just easily download it with any MDM that they've got today. We can keep an eye on things and make sure that we've got active MDM client and patching working no matter who you're using. Because we're only as secure as the total environment is. And whoever's not secure is only leading to a more challenging environment for all of us. Yeah. The weakest link could certainly uh, spread spread malware or just otherwise affect the rest of the ecosystem. So, yeah, kudos to you for for making that available to other vendors and other people yeah. as well. Not just keeping it close to the vest. Specifically, we're talking about the MDM watchdog utility, and we can link to these uh, these articles where you where you announce these. The first issue we're talking about is the rapid security r- response issue, which is related to the underlying MDM client issue that uh, the MDM watchdog utility helps mitigate. And it's interesting hearing you describe some of the steps taken to identify the issue and then test and like refine your mitigations for it. It almost reminds me of the kind of pre-MDM method of doing things that you started out describing where in the old days, you would create, each vendor would create like their own secret sauce, so commands and utilities, methods and practices and recipes and things for running various command line utilities and installing binaries and stuff on the system. And there's, we can still do that to some degree and it's all highly extensible but it we're all relying on mdm across the board and that's a spec that's published by apple and it's essentially like a, an api where you can send certain commands and hope it works and of course as you're describing when it doesn't work there's two issues really if i understand correctly like one is you can communicate with the device through mdm and you don't always know what the result is, or you don't always get a response that you can rely on. So that's one issue. And the other issue is like the MDM client, I guess it's a binary on the system, just gets stuck and stops responding. And that's, again, like you said, the Apple developed endpoint system that's communicating with Apple server. So you're telling Apple server, hey, for this machine, when it checks in, we want to send the update command. And Apple server says, great, sounds good. But the, the machine doesn't check in or the machine doesn't respond to the command or whatever. And you may not have visibility into that other than checking logs on the system and finding other ways to respond to it. Because when it when the MD, MDM binary can't respond, it, can't, it also can't tell you what's wrong. So you have to infer what's wrong. And so now you're essentially creating this watchdog utility to, uh, on each local system, mitigate the issue with the MDM client binary. That's You're exactly right. You're exactly right. And, and this is a little bit in the weeds in a way, but I think it's also hopefully fascinating for some user, for some viewers on what were, um, you know, what are the underlying fundamentals of these things? Because when we were agent only and going back to those days, you guys started the recordings 10 years ago, just like you said, it was a lot of open source tools and a lot of secret sauce utilities. And we've gotten almost complacent relying so much on MDM. I used to tell my team when we're agent only, if these devices stop checking in, we're out of business, right? The fundamentals of those devices always phoning home and not having to have the user like redeploy them is a is really important. And so it comes full circle that we realize, look, we can't fundamentally de- depend on this 100%. We've got an agent on there that we orchestrate with. We've got to take continue to take that to the next level and making sure that our core tools that we're working with are always available and working and doing its job because that MDM client, when it's locked up, that means if I got to lock the device, if I've got to do any security level utility, it's not responding. It's just not there. You can restart the device and other things like that, but it's just, it's not, we have to keep a watch on it. It's interesting, Jason, even calling it the watchdog utility, because I feel like there are some built-in Apple processes that have a watchdog. I think if they call it that or some kind of, it's okay. So my job is the is to be running all the time and wait for the user to press a certain keystroke or something. I'm just going to sit here and wait and I'll just do nothing until they, they press that keystroke. And it's really important that somebody's listening for that keystroke at all times. 
And so then you have that primary sort of process, but then you need something watching that process because it's so important that there needs to be this separate process that's also running, but it's even more lightweight, just in case the first process stops running because it crashes or whatever to relaunch that process. And probably the first process will actually launch the, the watchdog if it doesn't see the watchdog running or something like that. So they make sure it's like a way of guaranteeing that a certain process is running and listening or whatever. So Does Apple not- to the watchdog, Joe. Yeah. Who's yeah. watching the watchdog? Yeah. Like, why is Apple not watching their own MDM client, which is such an important component there? Yeah, that that naming convention you know, back when I did a better development, every OS in the world has a watchdog, and for that exact purpose. So we had written our own watchdog for our agent a few years ago for this simple purpose, and then we basically repurposed it to do a little bit more just for these these additional utilities. So yeah, that's exactly what it's for. Can't necessarily comment on the MDM client side of things. And when we have a challenge, we it looks like all the iPad OS and iOS devices, for the most part, obviously <clears throat> there's some that go offline and don't come back online. And we think those are legitimate, but not nearly the same percentage on the Mac OS side. So we do believe the iOS and iPad OS is fundamentally working well, but you don't know, right? Because we yeah. don't have anything else to no consistently be on the device, you have to check those things um, other than an app and other scenarios like that. But yeah. I would imagine times, you alluded to this a little earlier, but times would have been a little easier for you back when you were agent only because you had control over all those aspects of things. And I love the term that you used earlier where with these MDM commands, you're throwing it over the wall and basically it's up to Apple to, to make that happen. And I think this is a much, much needed add on to what we're missing because a lot of times we try and send an MDM command regardless of the MDM and just if it doesn't work, we're just left in the dark. I can't believe that this is the first tool that's reliable to do this. It's amazing. It's so hugely needed. It's unbelievable. I, I totally agree with you. I think even Adagy itself, because we started relying so much on MDM compared to the native utility and in, in we have real-time agent capabilities, we, we were able to do things a little bit more hands-on, I guess I would call it. We got complacent and that that complacency is happening across the board for vendors, I believe. And that this is one aspect to us getting back to what we do. We were doing a lot of reverse engineering back in the days, right? Because yeah. it wasn't a lot of published API stuff. I don't really want to go back to that. <laughs> we had to learn a lot and... And that was part of that secret sauce, like you guys said. So I think you're maybe being a little humble when you say you got complacent from just relying on Apple. That's Apple's edict and recommendation is these are the tools that you're supposed to use. And just tell us if you want to update, we're going to update it. Okay. Just tell us if you want to send the update command. All you can do is use that framework and talk to that, you know, that server to do a lot of the things. That's the correct way to do a lot of those things. And it's just unfortunate that Apple hasn't held up kind of their side of things. I can say on my side, it, it feels that way to me, like that they have not been a great steward of the kind of MDM framework as, as much as they want us to rely on it. Yeah, I mean, they've got a lot of stake in the game too now with business essentials to, to make it work. I think it's eventualities, just never as fast as we want it to be. Yeah. I wanted to ask you how other tools have come about, GitHub projects and things like that, that have tried to fill the gap to manage where updates are failing from Apple. Do you see this as being a piece to lessen the need for those additional tools because now it can be handled natively potentially? That's a good point. No, I think what you're talking about are ones where we're basically prompting the end user to do some of these things. This is right. where we have had, everybody's had the problems with the patching. So what the community has done is leverage these open source utilities to point the end user and drive them to initiate these scenarios. And that's not the answer that we need to deploy and leverage to to do things. And obviously, even this watchdog utility, hopefully, is a very short-term symptom utility that that goes away but in the meantime while we have this instability we want to make sure everybody has the best ability to patch their environments that's the most important hygienic security utility you can do period especially if we're going to be seeing more rapid security response patches come out 
Yeah, that's a great point. Updating is just absolutely mission critical these days. Speaking of 10 years ago when we started the show, you know, we would always get those comments from clients like, I never install anything because I never update anything and this and that. And it's maybe that could fly for a little bit then. But in, in today's world, you just you, you can't like even wait a week or two in most cases if, if you really want to stay as secure as possible. So it's really important that this stuff would be functional. Can you say more, Jason, about the issues that MDM Watchdog Utility is like looking for behind the scenes that, you know, like a failure state or failure mode that the system can, can present when MDM client is not responding properly? We're going to publish that with this in a lot of detail. So people know, I think it's really important if they're choosing to run this in any standalone fashion, We've got to be really clear that there's nothing phoning home to us. There's no PI anywhere. And exactly how are we doing this? What it's doing? What it's not doing? At the end of the day, it's not pure magic scenarios. We've just found a few different patterns to restarting the utilities in the right order and and then backing off and then eventually not continuing to try too hard with it, but going through five or six different steps with it when we've found that it's in different stuck states has been really reliable. So again, it's not, it's nothing magical. It's using their actual boot utility for these things, but doing them in the right order and using a combination of looking at logs, looking at process state to know when it's actually locked. And again, I hope this is just a, a small bookmark in the long life of what we're doing. We just need to make sure we all have the ability to dry those patches, not just security too. We've got WWDC and we'll have a new OS at that point in time. And obviously as things roll out in September, while the OSs can be quite stable, there's always going to be instability and things we need to patch and push out. So it's highly critical. Even the RSR, one of the problems was you had to patch to the latest version <laughs> before you get the RSR. Right. So there was there's a few pieces to that too. And obviously you need to be able to run the patching and then even the RSR. We want to be able to maintain the instability issues that might pop up and also the security issues. Jason, yeah. since Adigy went public with this, have you noticed any rumblings from the folks over in California? At least maybe officially, did you get a phone call or anything like that? Did you no, know? We, we definitely didn't get a phone call. I think the community has just been definitely spoken up in all channels. Rallied behind you yeah. and the troops, which is great. Yeah. appreciative of us of us stepping forward to do this. And again, this is just something that, again, my engineering team following protocol was just like, we'll wait for this bug to get fixed. And we decided we, we can't wait any longer. This needs to be something we have some control over. Indirectly, Apple said that they, they're working on the issue, trusting that they know what the challenges are and they're working diligently on it. And that they're going to overcome that. They clearly know this is a challenge in the market. Uh, they haven't said what they're going to do on future rapid security response updates on public disclosure. I don't think they're comfortable putting out public disclosures if it's very active and, and a major threat. They don't want to disclose all of it. I don't know. We'll see what happens on the disclosure side because I think that's actually another big deal too because security departments really want this level of public disclosure and it's what made our overall market that much better that every... Vendors pretty good about public disclosures. Yeah, that's another nice request that's outstanding. And I'm sure Apple will hear a lot of this feedback. Any uh, any predictions for WWDC, Jason? Do you think uh, we'll have a slide that says software update works or something like that? Or mm -hmm. MDM client is more reliable? Do you think they'll honestly announce anything in the new OS that will make this stuff better in some way? No, I'm sure they're working on making it better. The the RSRs, they will likely make mention of, but I think we're going to see a lot more of the security-based granularity that they're putting in place. Like device attestation was put out last year, and that's something that they're rolling forward with. And I'm excited about it. We could look at this as a moniker of some piece of frustration. There's no doubt that they're working to try to make the Apple platform the most secure, not privacy, that's one component, but secure platform out there. And that means taking, and so what device attestation is really doing is saying, we know that you're the legitimate physical device that's phoning home. And then right now you can clone, you can masquerade and get away with it to, to a secure enclave helps to get away from that. But with other apps, you can tap into this and verify, hey, look, this is the exact device that's that's 
properly phoning home. And uh, so they're definitely leading the charge on these things. We're definitely really excited about that because I think if an organization decides we have to use the most secure device period and Apple continues to fall through on that, we're going to see a lot more shift in the market. It's just going to be a necessity. But as we say, patch has to work in others. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a really good way to to position it is that Apple has this expressed goal for being the most secure platform. And one way that they, one thing they'll need to do to achieve that goal is to fix, just to make MDM 100% reliable and make sure that we can always patch systems and lock systems and stuff like that. So yeah, that's consistent with that, that goal. So we can hope for the best here. And in the meantime, we've got your tool, your MDM watchdog utility. And like you said, it's gotten some great feedback. Just anecdotally, a lot of people have reported even just in the Mac admin Slack channel for Adigy, that their their fleets have gone from like some embarrassing number of machines stop stopping communicating with MDM to like they deploy the watchdog it, when it was in beta even, let alone now when it's been released. And it just like fixes it pretty quickly over a short period of time and keeps them more in a supportable state. Just really good like anecdotal feedback that it actually works and no harms and that kind of thing. So yeah, that's fantastic. I'm glad we're bringing some awareness to that solution to this kind of like longstanding issue that we've all been seeing in some form for a while and maybe not really even knowing what the root cause is in some cases. Yeah, but this is frustration level is customers unknowingly. And I get it because Apple's not saying, hey, this is our issue. And we're not out there either publicly going crazy that this is, hey, don't blame us for patching not working. It's an Apple issue. So they're going to blame their vendor. It's not working. I use X vendor, it's their problem. So we're seeing these like massive swings of swapping of customers coming to us from other vendors because their patching doesn't work and vice versa. Wow. And it was just, it was getting out of hand where we just, we need everybody's stuff working. But it it was definitely, the point about it was we'd get on calls with customers who are just at their wits end because of this one clear, look, that's not working. How can we trust the vendor to do other things? I get it a hundred percent. And I was losing my hair over it. So we made that change. And I, I think the market, our clientele is feeling a lot better about it. But one of the hard parts about MDM is that people feel, I think they inherently feel more and more stuck every year, let's say. Because here's the difference. When it was agent only, this is a really important yet small distinction, is you have the device in a current state. You install the agent on the machine, like in the old days, you weren't changing anything about it, right? You were just pushing and prodding the device around as you needed to. You ripped the agent off, nothing changed. Today, there's so much going into MDM that's held in a that's certificate of enrollment, Wi-Fi, content, software, everything. You rip that out, you're bringing that device back to a very challenging blank state. Customers feel pretty stuck where they're at because the feeling of moving those devices is risk. And that's one thing we've been trying to really help people with, we haven't, we don't market it like crazy. We don't, it's not, but it is an aspect of, especially in this day and age with where we're at in the economy and people feeling they're not quite sure their job is solid. I don't want to make a move and risk more problems. So we made utilities to make the actual device migration itself and policies really smooth and easy. It's a fundamental difference that you're changing the device state just by moving MDM vendors as well. So it's very disruptive. However you slice it, we definitely help make it a lot easier for clients. And we probably need to tell more people about that. But I think there's just a notion that they feel stuck in whatever MDM they're using. Yeah, I can see that. First of all, let me say you have very good hair, so you're not losing much of it. Good job on you. But <laughs> Thank you. Going along that subject, though, I don't know how much you can really speak to this, but do you find as a whole, just opening up the door a little bit more than just the MDM updates portion, that Apple does make it an easy relationship to gather what you need to make your product better? Or is that a closed door, so to speak, and more difficult to have to guess along the way? It's always been guessing. There's, there's definitely help at critical times, you make the right calls and get things done. But at the end of the day, I think it's no surprise that Apple's trying to move to a, a very consolidated approach. There's nothing that they do that's not highly verticalized. So if we, if we look at manage app ID, Apple IDs, right, that is going to be 
the future trend of how they really want corporate users to be leveraging Apple devices. They they obviously have MDM certificates that they want to do things with at an MDM level, but it's the integration of all these technologies that's, I think, the most important one. If we think about security and compliance, I need to see a consolidated report of all my Windows and Apple devices in one place. Otherwise, CISOs will all have heart attacks across the world. You need the same thing with other areas of security and management. So I think they'll continue to build vertical technologies that that help them deliver that end-to-end ecosystem to some extent. There will always be opportunities for the vendors to put together, integrate, and deliver more and more value. I just, you know, we all know that Apple's never going to build all of it, especially with other major software vendors and partners. Those integrations are a lot more challenging. Yeah, I think the security aspect of things is a huge component of all this that we're seeing, like you've already mentioned, a big push towards. So getting that right is key and making sure that you're working with a partner like and like Adagy to get this going is important because otherwise we're in the dark in a lot of ways. So I think it's important to make sure you're coupled up with the right team. And we feel very fortunate to be partnering with you guys in that respect. Thank you. We think about three things in everything that we try to do. That is security first, not just security in our platform or what you can deliver, but just overall security for the end user, how to make their their experience better, but not constrain them at a security level. And then scalability. And I think about that in two ways, how you guys as admins can deliver more scale, but also how end users can find more productivity and scale what they're doing. And last is that Apple expertise. If we bring those three together um, for our partners and think about an overall solution that delivers that security, scale, and Apple expertise, I think we're continuing to be on a good track. I would think, Jason, that the, your whiteboard, you must have at least 10 whiteboards at Adigy. And because your product is in some ways so specific, but there's so many things that you need to do at the same time. And then there's so many possibilities you could be doing. Just to tantalize us a little bit, and speaking generally, so you don't give away any possible secrets, where do you see your product in the next year to two years? Just refining or do you have some secret things you're going to be rolling out for us? Now, look, I think it's it's not a big secret in a way. It's a fundamental strategy that I think our customers need to understand because this is the way I believe the world is moving. Apple has been an island, right? Whether it's the bespoke tools we used to use back when you guys started the show, when even today as we're getting more standardization with this, we have MDM as this standalone thing compared to the rest of the IT ecosystem. And we need to do more integration there. All of my other competitors are trying to build more vertical technology. They're trying to build their own antivirus and EDR. They're trying to build Windows or Android. Let's stick to what we know and let's integrate that into Microsoft, Intune, Azure AD, to Okta, to all of the AV tools, backup, et cetera. Let's let these Apple tools be first-class citizens and work within where they need to be properly managed. That has always been the corporate overall IT problem is that they're just left on an island. And think about the simple scenario where we still just physically assign devices to policies. What world are we in now? Adagy has our attributes with our identity where you pull the Mac out of the shrink wrap, you bring it up to that branded login screen for one of your customers or the organization itself, and that's going to have the logo there. They log in with Azure, Google, Okta, whatever they're using as an IAP. Whatever department that user's in, it'll automatically map them to the right policy. Now we're getting back to the world where we were in Windows NT days where we would be able to sign in and manage by users instead of managing all these physical devices out there. If I move my department to a, to move to a different department, I automatically migrate to a different policy and different configurations of software go onto my device. That's the way the world needs to be working with Apple and how true security it needs to be operating. 
That's a great point. Yeah, just zooming out, the sort of extensibility of Adagy has always been a huge appeal for me because we can sometimes work around Apple issues by building new tools on top of Adagy or using Adagy to deploy things like Watchman monitoring or any number of different software packages that aren't even necessarily built in like Watchman is, but but can be built either using the public software repository or we can build ourselves with great instructions from Adagy and great tools to build those, deploying MDM configuration profiles and things like that. There's lots of just built in features and functions that can be built out from there. And so that, yeah, that general kind of concept of being the tool to manage the Max that also integrates with the most other tools that we want to like also utilize. A great example is the Malwarebytes one view integration, where you just basically click a button to sign up and, and then click a button to deploy it to a policy and all the Macs automatically enroll. And now they're visible in your Malwarebytes OneView portal. Yeah. And We're not going to be a security company. We're going to be able to build ways to secure your endpoint in the CIS controls and benchmarks and compliance. But at an a antivirus level, we're not going to be an antivirus company, right? You're going to trust the AV vendors with the proper security research teams. Like I've got competitors that use Claim AV open source. Who trusts that to do its job, right? <laughs> we got to use top tier tools to leverage these things. Um, that's everything. That's backup. That's conditional access through Microsoft that you have that operating just like your Windows devices. That's the world we need to be operating as, a, as an IT workflow. Right. Yeah. We've, so we've looked at the next year or two, and I think you're already like pretty close to that vision you're creating. What about the next 10 years? Any long-term predictions for the, the ecosystem of Apple and Adagy's role there in 10 years from now? Can you? Can any of us even predict that far time. into the future? Yeah. <laughs> There's always consolidation that happens by that point. And all I can say is I'm I'm more bullish that Microsoft wants to own all the device management more than anybody else. Maybe they continue to pour more and more effort into doing so. I see more and more Windows based MSPs that are using RMMs, going away from RMMs to, to Intune and internal IT. It's definitely the de facto standard. So I think what you're going to see is that point of, okay, how much do I need to be able to do to meet this? single pane of glass to do everything. And that's where we need to be able to extend and provide this full functionality because that is where we will be with Apple in five to 10 years. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It's a, yeah, it's a great goal to be aiming for. And in the meantime, it's a great tool to have as you've proven with being able to quickly build out this MDM watchdog utility that no one else has, but they can get now because you've also open sourced it or at least made it available to your competitors in the industry. Yeah. So that's, that shows how confident you are in your platform and your tools yeah. and in this tool specifically to fix these issues that you've also helped un uncover and dig into and mitigate. Once again, Jason, thanks so much for your just stewardship of this Apple community and your support of the show as well. And for just doing a great job of running such an important company in this ecosystem. Thank you guys for almost 10 years of committed support for the whole community. It does mean a lot. Like I told you guys, when we first did our podcast together, that I was listening to you guys before I even started Adagy. And it was definitely a, you, you guys helped motivate me and keep me informed as we were growing. So it's a pretty dynamic and honorary thing that you guys have done. Continue to do. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you again, Jason. Jason Detbarn, founder and CEO of Adagy for joining us on Command Control Power. Until the next time, thanks, Jason. Special thanks to the following community members whose strong monthly support has sustained us for all these years. Ryan Gowdy, corecompetent.com. Weldon Dodd, kanji.io. Richard Wingfield, envisiondesign.net. Adam Rice, askadam.io. Mac Admins Podcast, podcast.macadmins.org. Tim Nyberg, themacguys.com. Michael Thompson, origin84.com. Matthew Waples, waples.net. Tom Pulse, boxit.tech. Jerome Potters, pitpro.nl. Steve Sorbo, macsos.biz. Andy Espo, callandy.com. And Nate Sinall, wearescout.com. Thank you all very much, and thanks to our patrons at every level of support. If you enjoy the show, we really would love your support. 
And if you already support us and can increase your monthly pledge, we really do find that encouraging. Commandcontrolpower.com and click support. Thanks very much for listening and for supporting the show. We know where I am. Half a century.